All right, what is up, people? If you're deep down the AI video generation rabbit hole like I am, you absolutely have to hear about this insane new open source model called Longcat Video. This thing is a 13.6 billion parameter beast coming straight from the MyTuan team in China. And seriously, it's making waves because it can churn out incredibly high quality videos that go on for minutes without that garbage quality drop off you see in so many other tools. The sickest part is that it's all packed in into one unified model. We're talking text to video, image to video, and even extending existing videos with continuation all in the same workflow. And get this, on the VBench 2.0 benchmark, it's pulling a 62.11% overall score, crushing other open source models like WAN 2.1 and even some closed source players like Vidu Q1. It's only trailing behind Google's VO3. It spits out 720p videos at a smooth 30 frames per second in just a few minutes, all thanks to some seriously clever efficiency tricks under the hood. Okay, enough talk, let's dive into some examples so you can see why I'm so freaking hyped. So kicking things off with text to video, you have got to see this slow motion clip of kids playing football. Just watch how the ball gets that perfect curve as it flies through the air. No weird funky warping on the kid's legs or anything. It honestly looks like a highlight clip you'd see in a professional sports broadcast. I mean, AI usually completely fumbles group seams like this because there are so many moving parts, but the physics here feel totally on point and it holds that consistency for the full six seconds. Okay, up next we've got a kid absolutely shredding on a skateboard, launching into the air and flipping the board. Peep that landing, it's so clean with no glitches or bizarre bending. As someone who's tested a ton of these models, I can tell you that flips like this are a massive stress test for maintaining temporal consistency, and long cat video just nails it without even breaking a sweat. Then there's this girl out on the water striking these incredible yoga or dance poses. Look at the ripples spreading out from her. They look completely natural. Her movements are just so fluid with no blur or distortion. And honestly, the level of detail in the water and her form looks even sharper than some of the stuff I've managed to get out of VO 3.1. Look, these might be cherry-picked examples, but they prove the potential is there for some absolutely killer results. Now, let's get into group dances, because trying to coordinate multiple people is a total nightmare for most AI models. Check this out. Five or six people are dancing in perfect sync, there are no hitches, everyone's feet are hitting the beat perfectly, and nobody's arm magically clips through someone else's body. That is a huge deal, since AI constantly gets tangled up when motions overlap. Here's another one in slow-mo. A solo dancer is spinning and her clothes are flowing just like real fabric. The physics on the material are just spot on, with no awkward stretching and it keeps everything looking consistent even with exposed skin. And fight scenes? Those are even tougher. Here's a clip where one guy kicks another and boom, the impact feels real and the other dude tumbles backwards naturally. Yeah, okay, the flying debris is a little extra, but the overall scene is totally believable and way more dynamic than what VO3 sometimes spits out. AI hates physical contact like that, but this model makes the hit and the reaction feel completely legit. All right, let's switch gears and talk about surreal videos because this is where the model really gets to flex its creative muscles. Picture this shiny crystal strawberry that looks like it's made of glass gets sliced by a knife. The cut is juicy and looks so realistic with the light just bouncing perfectly on all the different textures. There's no sound obviously, but visually it's just so crisp. Then there's this Chinese dragon slithering towards a guy, the scales ripple with this incredible fluidity, and the whole fantasy vibe just blends in seamlessly without yanking you out of the moment. Or how about a Formula One car that starts as a pencil sketch and then morphs into the real thing? The transition is buttery smooth with none of those sudden jarring pops. What about a guy tossing a tiny object into the air that balloons into a full-sized car? The scaling effects are so fun, and it handles the transformation physics like an absolute pro. And check this out. Wings sprouting from a man's back, turning him into an angel. The way the feathers unfold is just so natural. It's just beautiful stuff. One thing I'm absolutely loving is how flexible this thing is with different styles. You can throw a prompt at it like a woman flying, and it can give you a realistic version with lifelike gliding, a 3D version that pops like something out of a CGI movie, or an anime style with that bold, vibrant energy, all while keeping the core concept perfectly intact. 
It does the same thing for a kid walking with a school bag. The realistic version feels like a photograph, the 3D version adds that awesome depth, and the anime version just amps up the charm. It's a killer demonstration of how well it can control artistic styles without completely messing up the underlying scene. And check this out, a metal statue sprinting down a track like an Olympic runner. The metallic shine stays totally consistent as it pounds the pavement, and its strides look powerful with zero warping. Or how about a boy stepping out of a painting and into a real room to reach for a gaming chair? That portal transition from a 2D painting to a 3D space is just so slick. And a flying carpet ride over a city from a POV like you're actually chilling on it? The way the buildings zoom by is immersive as heck. We've even got a weightlifter grunting through a heavy lift. You can practically see the sweat and the strain and the physics of the barbell feel dead on. It honestly doesn't even feel like it's AI generated. And just for fun, check out these animals dancing to the same prompt, but generated from different starting images. You've got a cat with a human-like body busting out moves, a dog in traditional Chinese clothing getting down, and a 3D rabbit hopping along to the rhythm. They all sync up perfectly without any of those goofy, mangled limbs you usually see. And product animations? Dude, these are super marketable. There's a white cosmetic bottle in this misty floral wonderland with crystals and vapor wafting at it. Then an orange orang soda bottle riding a massive wave made of citrus slices under a sunny sky. And a red lipstick on a shiny surface with rose petals grifting down. Each one uses similar prompts but creates these wild, unique, surreal setups and the motion is just so incredibly smooth. But the absolute star of the show for me is, without a doubt, the long video generation, which it does through this video continuation feature. This is what really sets long cat video apart from the pack, because it can crank out videos that last for minutes without the quality completely tanking of the colors drifting all over the place like you see in pretty much every other model. Their big claim is that no matter how long you push it, you won't get that degradation. And based on the examples I've seen, it's pretty darn impressive even on really tough scenes that would totally break shorter generations. Let me walk you through some of these because they're absolutely wild. First up, you have to see this ballet dancer in what looks like a massive opera hall. This clip is over four minutes long. Right at the start, she's spinning and posing super elegantly on a totally empty stage, with just some chairs around and no audience yet. The movements are just so fluid, like you're watching a real performance. If you tried to generate something similar in VO3 for even eight seconds, you'd probably start spotting flaws right away. But here, as it keeps playing for 25, 30 seconds, everything holds up perfectly without any issues. Now, if I jump ahead to the middle, around the two-minute mark, yeah, you can see a slight change in her face from the original dancer, and an audience starts to appear in the background, which wasn't there before. It's like the scene is evolving, with people slowly filling in those seats, but the dance itself just keeps going strong without any major glitches. And at the very end, there are even some smoke effects creeping into the scene, but the whole thing is still cool and coherent for over four minutes. I mean, this is the kind of long-form generation that I just love to see, because it shows the real potential we're heading towards. Now, this next one is an ice skating performance, where the character is spinning and dancing all over the place with a ton of camera movement. At the start, this girl is just whirling like crazy, and it's super impressive because no other model like Sora or VO3 could pull this off without errors, even in a short clip. The full video is about 4 minutes and 16 seconds long, and early on, her outfit is more exposed, without any pants or anything. But as I skip forward to the middle, her lower half somehow turns into trousers, so a little flaw is creeping in there. And by the end, she's got extra layers on top too. The flaws do build up slowly over time, but the ratio of flaws to length is way lower than anything else out there. Overall, it's a super cool generation. The endurance this thing has is just way better than the competition. All right, let's switch it up to something different. A food blogger video where a guy is just sitting at a table loaded with food, eating spaghetti nonstop for two minutes straight. Just watch how he twirls the fork and shovels it into his mouth. It looks exactly like a real person eating. There are no awkward mouth movements or weird glitches when the pasta actually hits his lips, which is where a lot of models just fail hard. I've tried similar prompts and other tools, and the eating always looks off. But here, it's totally spot on. Skip to the end, and you'll see the camera zooms in and out, and sometimes his face goes off frame. But when it comes back, it's the exact same dude, with no changes. The performance holds together perfectly, and the quality stays high. This model is just really smart about maintaining consistency. 
Product promos are another huge highlight here. Check this guy in a shoe shop, holding up a shoe and talking about it for a full minute. You've got all the other shoes in the background, he's reviewing it like a pro, and there are absolutely zero flaws. He just keeps gesturing naturally the entire time. Jump to the end, and it's still flawless, no morphing or anything weird. Similarly, there's this girl with a perfume bottle, and the clip is over a minute long. She's chatting away, holding up the bottle, and her face stays rock solid the whole time, and her poses feel totally real. Middle and end, no demorphing whatsoever. It's incredibly rare for AI to nail this kind of stuff at this length. And now for the next awesome feature, which they're calling interactive video generation. Now, in my book, interactive usually means something with real-time user input, but here it's more about crafting a super detailed prompt that includes a timeline of actions. You describe the scene, the character, the setting, and then you break down exactly what happens second by second. It's basically like you're directing a mini-movie right inside your prompt, and the model follows your script step by step. Let me break down a few examples to show you just how impressive this is. They've got a bunch, and I'm going to take my time on each one because the level of precision here is just wild. Starting with this one of a young guy at his desk, the prompt sets the stage with insane detail. He's in a gray t-shirt, focused on typing away on his laptop in a cozy room, and his screen is showing documents. Then it lays out the timeline of actions. From zero to six seconds, he reaches for his headphones and puts them on. From six to 11 seconds, he closes the laptop. And from 11 to 16 seconds, he stands up and walks away from the desk. It's a 22 second generation in total. And the transitions between each of those timed segments are completely seamless. There are no awkward jumps. The model sticks to the script like a professional actor. Next up, we've got this girl in a red shirt who's looking right at the camera. Her prompt starts with a wave. Then she shifts to talking or explaining something. Then she makes a heart shape with her hands, and she finishes it all off with a flying kiss. I've tried prompts like this in VO3, and the kiss or the heart always comes out super wonky, with the hands merging together or something. But here, it's just crisp and on point for every single timed command. That's super impressive for gestures that really test fine motor control. Then there's this reflection scene with a woman and a black dress standing in front of a mirror. The timeline prompt goes like this. First, she's just gazing at her reflection. Then she washes her hands. And finally, she dries them with a towel. Okay, yeah, the drying part has some minor sync issues, like the motion isn't 100% fluid, but when you compare it to other models, it's way better with no major breaks in coherence. The mirror reflection holds up for the most part too, which adds that extra layer of complexity without too much drift. And look at this kitchen scene. A woman in a bright, airy space is cutting bread. Then she puts the knife down as the camera zooms out. She pours milk from a carton into a glass, sets the carton aside, and takes a sip. It's all sequenced perfectly according to the timeline, just like a clip from a cooking tutorial. They've got even more examples like this, but we're short on time, so I'll stop there. Overall, this interactive mode gives you a level of narrative control that's really tough for AI, and Longcat Video just pulls it off with way fewer flaws than the competition. Okay, so how does all this magic work under the hood? I'll keep it simple for you guys, no need to get too geeky. Think of Longcat Video as a diffusion transformer. It starts from these noisy TV static-like frames and gradually cleans them up into a coherent video that actually follows your prompt. But, and this is the key, it does all of this in a compact, latent space, which makes everything run way faster and more efficiently. It gets that speed boost by compressing the video frames with a VAE, which shrinks down the time and space dimensions a ton while still keeping all the important details the model needs to build motion and structure. What you feed it can be just text, an image plus text, or even a partial video that you want to continue. The model treats all of these as video continuation simply by counting how many starting frames you give it. If there are no frames, it's pure text to video, one frame and it's image to video, multiple frames and it's video continuation. This means the same model can naturally handle all three use cases without having to switch modes. To make those super long clips efficient, it uses something called block sparse attention, plus a clever caching trick for the given parts of the video, so it's not constantly recalculating the fixed context as it generates new frames. 
After the core training is done, they fine-tune it with a multi-reward version of RLHF called GRPO. What that basically means is the model gets feedback from multiple automatic judges, not just on does it look good, but also on does it match the text and the motion. This helps it learn how to balance aesthetics with prompt alignment instead of just over-optimizing for a single score. This whole setup helps it stay stable during training while seriously improving the real-world video quality and how faithfully it follows your prompts, both on public and internal benchmarks. For speed, it uses a coarse-to-fine approach. First, it does a quick draft pass at a lower resolution and frame rate. Then it does a refinement pass that sharpens everything and scales it up to around 720p at 30fps. All of that within minutes on powerful GPUs. The huge win here comes from combining that two-stage pipeline with block sparse attention and caching, which slashes a ton of unnecessary computation and delivers a roughly 10 times speed up compared to a basic dense setup. Bottom line, you get a single, unified model that can generate minutes-long temporally stable videos without any obvious color drift, that follows your prompts super closely, and that runs efficiently down to latent compression, caching, and sparse attention. It's practical, it's fast, and it keeps the controls simple. Just keep what you provide fixed and let the model generate the rest. So to close this out, the code and the full model weights are already out there on GitHub for anyone to grab and start playing with. Now, for 720p output, you're going to need some serious hardware. We're talking 80 gigabytes of VRAM. But you can get 480p running just fine on something more consumer level, like a 4090 with 24 gigabytes. I'm betting the community will probably drop some distilled or slimmed down versions pretty soon to make that high-res generation more accessible for everyone. All the links are down in the description, so go check it out. Drop a like if this got you as excited as I am, and let me know in the comments what you think or if you've already tried it. I'll see you guys in the next one.